Yeah, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Let's wait one minute for everyone to, to log in and uh, those that are in the waiting room that can join us and then we'll start. Okay, I still see some people are in the waiting room. So Laura that is helping me will let them in and those that will come and I think we can start to, to not delay longer our webinar. Perfect. So um, welcome. Uh, welcome to our first webinar uh, related to the open call that is organized under Bonsaps project. Uh, I'm Isabela Zrazinska, a senior project manager at Funding Box, uh, that I'm leading this, uh, this open call. And uh, thank you for joining us today. I guess all of you are interested to get more details about this funding opportunity that, uh, that we have organized with OneSub's project. So we'll pass today for the main scope of it. So we'll tell you what's, what's expected, okay? what's the ideal proposal. Uh, and also about the minimum requirements, starting from the legal part, but also like the content related. And I'll also uh, tell you a bit more about the tools uh, and support documents that you can read uh, to, um, to actually write the winning proposal. Uh, as for the housekeeping rules, uh, please write your questions in the chat. Okay, so at the end of this session, I will probably take 30, 40 minutes presenting, and then at the end, We'll have a plenty of time for questions and answers that we will try to uh, to reply. Okay, so uh, so let's start from the oops, let me move my slides here from uh, the presentation of Bonsaps project itself. For those of you that haven't heard uh, about us yet, uh, Bonsaps is the European funding project. It's Horizon 2020 funds uh, related to the AI adoption and digitalization of SMEs. And Bonsaps was launched last year. So we are now in the middle of the project and the people behind or organizations behind Bonsaps are these eight partners that are shown on the slide. The consortium is led by HESO. It's a university and research institution from Switzerland. And uh, then you can see the Bonsai Committee Association and VISO. BTH from Sweden, Unibo uh, from Italy and ST that are responsible for interaction of functionalities and services uh, to the marketplace, to the bonsai marketplace that I'll tell you a bit more uh, later on. And then uh, ISTI that is the leading uh, digital talent um, business school in Spain. They are leading the business support in our program and are also responsible for dissemination activities. And last funding box that I represent, we are leading the part about the open calls and the grant redistribution, as well as connection with digital innovation hubs. So altogether, um, we, are, we are having, I would say, I would divide it two main goals. First, uh, we, we want like, to provoke the shift from cloud to the deep edge, okay, with the bonsai AI marketplace that is actually the marketplace for the edge solutions, or will be, because it's under development now. Uh, and why edge? Well, as you know, um, uh, we want, well, through edge, we can avoid the large amount of data traffic from the device to cloud. And that helps to increase the energy efficiency and, that, and latency for the applications that are developed on electronic devices. So I be, we believe this is a future and that is why, well, this project and also AI solutions developed um, and that will be supported uh, in these projects are to be deployed at Edge. 
And connected with this edge, I already mentioned, I think twice, <laughs> a bond size AI marketplace. So this is the main scope and goal of this project to, uh, to develop and to, to add and develop functionalities to this platform and also to test it together with the, with, with the ecosystem that is divided to the AI talents that are these developers and data scientists that are bringing a lot of innovation to the platform and SMEs uh, and corporates that are these industry leaders that help us to define the, the demands okay, and the challenges that uh, this AI attached uh, solutions could solve okay, and that could enrich also the marketplace. So the end goal with this bonsai marketplace is to create um, the easy way for the SMEs the modular services so they can actually download and then use them uh, the AI edge solutions that are available on the marketplace and that is the last phrase helps to digitalize uh, the SME in Europe and that is one of the main goals of well of many European projects but here it's covered for this for these functionalities no for the marketplace that will uh, that will help to bring this uh, to Europe. And how the open call is placed within these objectives that I presented. Well, uh, you might or not know that uh, last year we have launched the first open call where we were actually bringing the AI talents that are researchers, AI developers, or data scientists, also from the research ecosystem, that they received, we selected 30, 30 AI talents that were founded to develop and integrate the AI solutions uh, to the platform. So there is a lot of results already that that support program and th those um, those AI talents brought to the platform. Okay, and that's what we call the supply. Okay, uh, and now we are focused this year on the second open call that I will present today. That is uh, that is dedicated to the SMEs, to the adopter SMEs, how we call them. And that funding, uh, that funding is focused to, to support the SMEs in defining the challenge that will be published on Bonsai's marketplace. And with the use of funding and also with the, with the AI talents that now we have a lot of uh, AI talents experts in the ecosystem, those SMEs can receive support to, to develop the AI solutions that could help them to solve this challenge. Okay, so that is why we call it demand because now we are here to listen to the, uh, to the SMEs, what's their needs in order to make the marketplace uh, efficient. So um, in short, uh, what is the role of such an adopter SME okay, if you get selected to the project? So first of all, well, it's in the pink in this, uh, in this scheme, you can see adopter SME applies to the second open goal. So of course, this is the first role. You define the proposal uh, and your challenge and you submit this proposal. Uh, if you, uh, this proposal, I will tell uh, in details what's the ideal vision of it. Uh, we call it use case, okay? Because um, you define the, the use case for your, that could be adapted or implemented to your institution, right? So how we can help you, the challenge, but it's also the use case for the bonsai marketplace because it's required to use or to reuse one of the resources that are available on the bonsai marketplace. Okay, so that is the use case. The, the adopter SME is also the well receives the funding. Okay, so we sign the subgrant agreement when you get selected and you receive the uh, up to 74,000 euro for the execution of your use case. And from this 74,000, you can, well, you, there is a part of the grant that goes directly to the adopter SME, but there's also a part uh, of the grant that uh, for which you, you will be able to find, to find and well, to contract the external services like experts or uh, HPC resources that will allow you to execute the use case. And then last um, and important one is also that the adopter SME will need to provide the data for training of the AI models. Okay, so this is also important to, to, be, to be aware of that. And here you can see, well, I already mentioned that when describing the role of adopter because everything is connected as on this picture. So then we have also two elements that are these AI talents and HPC providers that are also engaged. These are these external services, okay, that will be contracted by SME from the grant to 
to actually develop the AI solution. And then this element of bonsai is marketplace that uh, I will also tell you about, but this is like in the, in the nutshell uh, as the introduction. And what are the benefits? So um, we'll select up to 11 uh, use case, well, adopters that represent this, these use cases. And those adopters will start the support program, will enter the, uh, the, the support program that uh, is six months okay, with the with the apps, will receive funding up to 74,000. Uh, you also receive the access to pool of more than 70, 170 AI experts and providers that I will also mention today. Uh, support with bonsai marketplace. Here, it's very important to be to be aware of that. That of course, this onboarding to the platform will be with the support of the bonsai team. Okay, so of course, we want to make sure that the platform is available and is easy to use for for such an adopters, and also um, those that will pass to the last stage to, uh, of the process of the program of the support program will also receive business mentoring from, from organized by ISDI uh, that will allow to actually scale up the AI solution and you know, scale also the business um, that to which this AI solution is implemented. So many benefits. One that is also not mentioned that of course you become the part of the ecosystem that, that is actually very, very promising and very active. So it's also another thing that uh, at least I really like about Bonsaps. And here is the this division of the grant that I wanted to mention. It's important to be aware that this seventy four thousand uh, is divided in twenty seven thousand. That is like the direct uh, grant that goes to adopter SME, okay, for covering the cost of participation of the project, like personal costs or travel, or if there are any any other things that are needed to the use case execution. Then there is a big part of the grant that is up to 39,000 for contracting the AI talents. Okay, so I already mentioned we have more than 170 AI talents currently validated. Okay, these, um, these experts okay, have different profiles from data scientists to researchers. Uh, they've, been, they've been working with us and they've been applying, uh, they've been validated by Bonsap's project. Okay, it's the process that we have started last year already, and they are ready to start working uh, with the SME to support them in, uh, in developing the, the AI solutions and also to cover the lack of capacities that this adopter SME might have, right? So um, we have gathered this ecosystem together. And then also part of the grant is uh, up to 8,000 is the voucher for HPC resources that are also used when, um, when optimizing the, the AI models. Okay, so, and here we also have full uh, of the validated HPC providers that are connected with the bonsai marketplace platform and can also be used if uh, needed. So all of this uh, about the grants, okay? And then here you can see this six month support program divided in stages. So the first stage zero is uh, will last one month. It will start probably in February. And that is when the, well, we'll have the welcome event, of course, to explain everything in details, but just as the overview, that is when the adopter will work very closely with Gonzam's team because uh, we'll have to prepare the individual use case plan that will establish the, the, main, the main tasks, okay, for the AI solution development, the KPIs that will be reviewed on at the end of each stage and that you will be reviewed against. Okay? And, uh, and also well, planning of a budget or uh, things like this. And also in the, this first month, uh, the Bonsaps experts will help you to uh, define very well the challenge and to publish it on the marketplace. Okay? So this will be like becoming from the proposal, from your idea to something applicable to the bonsai marketplace. And then um, also to match you with the experts, with the AI talents, okay? And it needed with HPC providers. So we, there is a pool and we'll try to guide you through, through them to match you with those that fit best. Um, and then you will start working on the data set and in stage one and stage two, you will have been involved with to work with the AI talent that will actually here uh, help you to standardize data set, train the tool, 
uh, evaluate and deploy it and that will lead to the AI application. So the stage one and two is, is there is a heavy engagement of the AI talents that are covered from voucher. Um, and everything also well with the support of OneSAP's uh, team. So what is the ideal proposal? And now, as you know, the, um, the benefits or the role of the adopter, uh, I wanted to tell you like how to write and what to pay attention to. So first of all, um, the ideal proposal should represent this high potential use case for development of low cost, highly scalable AI application at edge solutions. So that is something that I believe it's, it's already was mentioned from my slides, but I wanted to underline this point. And another important point that was also was mentioned is the use of both size marketplace services and resources. Okay, so here, um, this is important. We will organize actually the second webinar in two weeks that will be focused specifically on this, on the bond size marketplace demo, and also to give you more details on how to reuse um, the services that are now uh, and are available. But of course, these are uh, this is already also included in the open call documents. So first of all, there is this beta version of the bond size marketplace, but please note that not everything is published yet. So the adopter SMEs will get actually access to much more things. And the detailed list of the tools uh, is included in the Annex 1 that actually will be updated next week with more details, okay? So for, for sure next week, you can expect the bonsai marketplace catalog that will actually allow to, to refer to this important point even better in the proposal. Um, here is the resume, I will not read that, but there are the, because the, the bonsai marketplace uh, dedicated yes. cover this. Uh, but it's important to know that there is the research. Uh, the... Che è più incentrata su, cioè la maggior parte del, uh, Laura, um, dei soldi. Okay, thank you. Uh, so yes, there are data tools, AI assets, AI applications, okay, extensive data sets available. So there's uh, already a lot of things there. And I really invite you to the second webinar to get more details. And uh, we'll also send a notification when the catalog is published. Um, on the next slide. Yes. So yes, here you can see the, well, it's a banner about the second webinar that I already mentioned. And also for those of you that are more, I would say tech savvy, that you know more about the technology, uh, you can also do the course uh, that is related, at least take the first two lessons in this online course that is available. It's more dedicated to the AI talent. But if anyone is interested, uh, you can actually also pass through it. It's uh, at least the two first sections of this course are, it is where it is explained what, uh, what is bonsai's marketplace. Okay, so this is sort of the resources available for now, but during the open call duration, we'll also provide you more. Um, another thing about ideal proposal, I already mentioned that adopters uh, will also uh, be responsible for providing data for training models. So you need to remember about two things, uh, that it's well important to demonstrate the availability of a good quality data. Here, as this is a very short six month program, we really must need to be sure that at least digital format of data is, is a minimum. Okay, there will be, well, as there is quite um, well, the six months will not allow, like if it's not in digital format, it would be very difficult to actually uh, implement such a solution and reach the goals of the program. And then another thing uh, that some of you are asking is related to the, to the license terms. So of course, um, those license terms are resulting from, uh, are the subjects of the data if uh, used. So if it's commercial or if it's not commercial, okay? so. Um, but what we want and what is important that these AI solutions that are pub will be published on the marketplace, uh, we aim that it's, well, if ideally they should be open source, if not commercial data is used. If it's commercial, uh, then it would be great to think on the, like, on the rights to exploit and commercialize uh, the solution developed based on such a data later on. Okay, so these are two things, depending on which uh, data sets you will select, it might differ. Then uh, for the team, of course, here there are two aspects to, to remember about. 
Um, one is that, well, you have to prove that you actually need our help, okay? So this is this lack of internal resources. Um, in most cases, it depends, well, uh, it could be lack of the resources that you actually don't have the experts that could develop such an AI solution. This is something we call AI, AI aware level, okay? So it's like you're thinking about some AI solution, but you don't have the experts, but we also accept uh, proposals from we call it AI competent uh, level of AI maturity. And that is when like you might have a team of experts, but for instance, you lack time or you lack actually the team, like team members, no? So this is also this lack of competences, but also resources that might happen to SME and in which we want to help you. So you should somehow try to tackle one of these points in the proposal. And then uh, it's important to, um, to, to be aware that when you will enter six month program, we need someone like to be in contact with the with the AI talent to actually control uh, the execution no, of this uh, of this AI solution. So to be in contact with both apps mentors, with the external AI talents that will be hired. So you need to to think about it and nominate. Like for instance, if you are an uh, SME with a small team. Ideally, you should nominate someone that has some knowledge now about the innovation technology and how to implement so that person can collaborate uh, with the AI talents in the development now of such a solution. Um, and here you can see, well, I already mentioned many times these external providers, but also just to tell you where they come from, I mentioned this, we call them expression of interests, and these are the links. So we are recruiting these providers since one year, okay? So that's why now we have a pool of providers that have this minimum level uh, of competences or, or technical, um, technical criteria in case of HPC providers that will be supported, supporting selected uh, SMEs. So I believe on top of the grant, uh, it is also great that you, know, you already have this pool of experts available to, to be able to start um, with the AI solution. Um, yes, another thing about ideal proposal uh, is also, well, this is the, as I call it ideal, okay, so I repeat it's, it's the ideal one, uh, if actually the, your AI solution or your use case could be uh, applied to uh, other sectors, other industries or end users. If you are able to show that, it's a very big plus, right, because we call it scalability, okay, and it's actually one of the criteria. Uh, if this could be scaled uh, even more uh, and has more potential, then um, it's it's very good uh, for for the proposal. And uh, here, as the inspiration in the guide for applicants, uh, there is a document that we call the survey. So last year, no earlier this year, sorry, we made the consultation with the regions um, to actually ask them which uh, challenges from the industrial sites have the high impact and are actually strategic, uh, strategic. So you can try to read it as the inspiration, okay? And see actually, according to the public uh, entities, which are those sectors that are desired to like have AI adoption uh, more, um, that it, AI absorption is highly beneficial, okay? So this is just the inspiration and a tip, but always well seen. And this is the summary of everything what I said. If you are able to tackle these five points, I believe uh, you have the ideal and hopefully winning proposal. Um, so then I wanted also to like, before you decide to apply, if, if you fit to this proposal scope, now just quickly check from your institution side, more legal points uh, to check if you're actually eligible. So first legal point, important, uh, this open call is, uh, is open for the individual companies that are uh, that are established well in Europe, UK or associated countries. So this is very important. Uh, and you need to check uh, if your company has a status of an SME. And what does it mean? Usually there are two main criteria. Uh, the head count, so the people that are hired in your company, uh, it has to, it cannot exceed 250. And then your annual turnover or balance sheet. Okay, so it has to be less or equal to 50 million euro or annual balance sheet total less or equal to 43 million. 
In case you have doubts, because this is very important part um, of the eligibility, uh, in case you have doubts about your SME uh, definition, you can always refer to the, to the European guide that actually established this criteria very in a very clear way. And also here a tip from my experience, but pay attention also to the connect to your connection with other enterprises. For instance, if you are part of the bigger group, that could also influence your SME status. So I always advise to look not like only on your company, but of the connections that you also have that sometimes might um, influence the SME status. Um, then the AI maturity, I already mentioned that uh, this a little bit with the, with the competences. So here uh, we have this AI readiness index, uh, okay, that there is a link in the guide for applicants in case you can read very detailed description of it. But uh, basically there are, well, there, there are four levels that exist and three of them are eligible. So the AI hour being the, the lowest, okay? So you need to like at least have this idea or on where AI and how AI can be implemented into your company, okay? AI ready, yes, you have some knowledge, but as I mentioned, you need to, and even you might have some resources, but you lack time and you need the guidance and then AI competent, that usually lack more time or budget uh, to actually develop such a solution. The only uh, AI maturity level that is not eligible, and it's not on this slide, uh, it's AI unaware. Okay, so this is like the lowest from all of these. And AI unaware, uh, we define them as like adopters that don't even have the idea on how or, or where this AI can be, uh, can be applied. So usually for those cases, the detailed assessment, first uh, level assessment is needed. So that is why it is not covered by this open call. Okay, We need you to have this idea to actually be able to write the proposal. Um, and then three other things, also the minimum knowledge uh, of how to train uh, and optimize and deploy algorithms for embedded devices is required. So you see there is also one question, the application form where uh, edge unaware how we define so like zero totally no idea about edge uh, is not eligible okay so and all the others like at least minimum knowledge at least about cloud uh, implementation is required because the adopter sme will have to be in contact with the ai talents so at least this minimum knowledge and experience is uh, very important then the quality of data so as i mentioned there is a question that if you mark not eligible, uh, not sorry, no digital format, then of course, then you might also be not eligible. So this digital is the minimum. And then of course, there are some questions like where you should elaborate a bit more about the availability of the good quality data. Uh, and then last, the use of resources and services available for one size marketplace. So here as I mentioned, it's important to review the catalog that will be published next, uh, next week and like to try to refer to this as much as you can okay, in, the, in the proposal. Here is the timeline. So uh, just to remind you, the application deadline is up until 2nd of November. So there are still six, uh, six weeks left to improve and work on your proposal. But please do not wait to the last moment. Okay, This is uh, always good to at least one day before, just in case to submit the application, do not wait to the last minute. Um, and then we'll start the selection process that I will also describe on next slides. But just about the timeline, um, you will probably think like why this open call results will be announced in 2023. But this is because the selection process, well, we really want to make it transparent and fair. So it takes time to process all the applications. And I will tell you later on uh, each step. So that is why by the end of January, when all the stages are completed, we will announce the results. But of course, I mean, in each, on each stage, we, you will receive the notifications okay, about the stage of your application. But what is important here is this support program. You can see it will start in February and will last six months. So you can see the overview if you apply, how you should plan your time uh, and your team engagement as well. And here are this. Uh, here is the selection process. So it has four uh, four phases that I will enter into the details into um, on the next slides. 
So the first one, the eligibility check, will be based on um, will be based on what you mark in your application. Okay, so these are the close questions that are to identify the eligibility, such as country, or your proposal also should be in English. Okay, this is very important. Uh, there is also a section about the declaration of honor. So please make sure that you mark everything. I confirm because we need your declaration that you understand the guide for applicants that you well, voluntarily agree to participate in this open call. These are sometimes might sound like formalities, but it is very important uh, to have these statements from you. Um, then, of course, this eligibility criteria. So this is this SME status. So pay attention to what you mark about uh, the number of employees, your turnover, because these are the questions that are checked um, again with, by our system when you mark them. Uh, and if you fulfill all of them, then you pass to the next stage. Uh, also here to mention on, well, multiple submissions are not allowed, so you can submit only one proposal. Okay, please pay attention to that. Uh, and only the one that last edited will be taken into account in case you submit more. Then um, there is optional phase that we call pre-scoring, but this is will be applied only in case if there are more than 100 eligible proposals. Okay, so this is also also made by system where we will, the system will assign the uh, to the close uh, question answers, the points. Okay, so uh, those questions will be uh, will be scored, and then there will be a ranking of top 100 proposals that will pass to the next stage. Uh, for the details about the pre-scoring criteria, if it will be applied, are included in the frequently asked question, okay, in case you would like to have a look. But those questions are, as I mentioned, always with the close questions, so multiple choice questions, and they are related to edge knowledge, use, your use case status, your AI skills, okay, so you can also pay attention to that. And then um, those those 100 rank proposal enter to the external evaluation phase. And this is, I would say, the most important one. And that takes from two up to three weeks. That's why the process is quite long, because um, there will be each proposal will be evaluated by two external independent experts okay, with expertise in, edge, uh, in uh, AI at edge. So these experts will evaluate the sections uh, excellence, impact, and implementation. Okay, so they will focus not only on closed questions, they will actually read everything what's in the open questions to evaluate the potential, uh, the potential of your use case. Um, and they will score these proposals from zero to five, each of these criteria. And that will give us also the total uh, that uh, will allow well, and we will be able to do the ranking okay uh, according to this course here important those uh, there is a minimum threshold okay so based on this course um, the minimum threshold for criterion is three out of five points and for the total sum of scores it's 10 out of 15. okay so those of you that will pass will enter to the last uh, stage of selection process that is consensus meeting and that is when a selection committee, which is at least one representative from Bonsap's project partners, uh, we gather on the meeting, we review all the proposals that pass the threshold and the ranking uh, from external evaluators. And this is like the final check to, to, to confirm that the proposals that are ranked uh, are aligned with the Bonsap's goals and scope, that of course, here the Bonsap's partners are the best to review that. Uh, also, how this this main goal of testing the bonsai marketplace is addressed, and also, well, in case there are some ethical concerns or potential conflict of interest, if any, this is the moment when uh, the final decision is made and can be discussed uh, by selection committee. And after this last phase, um, that probably will be uh, beginning of December, you will receive the results. Okay, those of you that uh, that pass that are selected, and those of you that are rejected will receive a solid feedback, uh, also from the external evaluators and uh, the consortium. Um, so those that are selected enter the last stage um, that uh, that is called legal check. So this is like everything we need to do uh, related to the before signing the subgrant agreement. So before you 
receive the grant and you start the support program. So um, Funding Box Legal Team will ask you then for documents that uh, will, will allow us to verify your SME status uh, or well also your previous funding in another project to check if there are no overlaps Okay, so these details, if you want to see actually which documents will be requested in this last stage, you can also uh, see the list in the frequently asked question document. Um, and also if you're interested to see what are the conditions of uh, when you join the support program, we have published the draft of such a subgrant agreement available on the Open Call website. So uh, you can also have a look on that conditions. And uh, that's it. When you sign the subgrant agreement, you start uh, this journey with the Bonsaps project, and you are officially the beneficiary of, uh, of Bonsaps second open call. Um, so I hope you're still or interested uh, just to hear how to apply. Um, so there is a, well, there is of course the link that uh, I believe Laura will share in the chat, and that some of you might already know. So you should, uh, if you haven't done so yet, you should register to Funding Box. And then with your account, you click Apply Now. Uh, and that is when you can see the application form. Okay, uh, it is very important to read uh, Guide for Applicants. Okay, that is available in the Read First section of the open call. This is like a Bible with the key elements uh, and requirements for the open call. Okay? It's, we try to make it uh, very direct and short to make sure that at least these minimum criteria are understood. And then there is frequently asked question document where there are all the details, okay, if you need more information. And also this uh, frequently asked question document is updated during the open call. So if we see that there are some questions or interesting questions that can help you or that are asked uh, by many applicants, we will update this uh, document. And that's it. I believe we got to the point when we can start. We have 20 minutes for questions and answers that uh, I will try to address. So, uh, Laura, um, are there any questions in the chat to me? Thank you, Sarela. Yes, uh, we have nine questions for now, but receiving more. Uh, so one of our participants asked uh, about the data set. So he says about the data set, can I adopter use an an already available open source data set? Uh, yes, these are not, these no commercial data sets. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Um, as for the countries that are eligible, uh, there is a question, which associated countries you consider for Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe? Well, the list is quite extensive. So what I would advise is in the guide for applicants, there is a link that redirects you directly to the European Commission uh, document where the list is included. Okay? Because I think there are like 15 countries uh, that I, I don't have now in mind full list, so I don't want to make a mistake, but they're linked to the guide for applicants. So please refer uh, to that document. Thank you. We have a third question. Can a proposal be presented as a follow-up of other I-based projects which were you funded, for example, Stairway? Uh, yes, yes, they can. Um, the only thing you have to pay attention to when applying as a general rule, okay, not only both subs, but we always review. So probably if you get selected, we'll ask you for the proposal from, from your previous project just to make sure that there is no double funding rule. This is this overlap that I mentioned. So it's important to be able to show or to prove that uh, the things that you be funded in Bonsaps were not founded already in the previous project. Okay, so you have to show that we are funding something new, no, not repeating the same thing. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, we have another question. For the solution of the proposed use case to the Italian sold, you need to rely on the pre build I application from the marketplace, or do the Italians need or can develop a solution from scratch? Uh, well, here I believe it's uh, well, it's always uh, better to use the bonsai marketplace resources. And as I mentioned, if you are able to reuse what's already there, 
you probably have bigger chances to get selected. Um, why? Uh, because, well, we only have six months of support program. So actually, we also have to make sure that the AI solution development and what you want to achieve during the six months is feasible. So it's more feasible if you reuse already available uh, resources no? or something that, uh, that could be reused and adapted more than starting from the scratch. So it's possible, but I would recommend to try to think on uh, reutilization to, to have a bigger chance actually to be selected. Okay, very good. Um, another participant has a question regarding the six months of the last support program. How much time are the AI talents involved in the project? Well, the AI talents are involved, I would say, because the project is six months, but you saw that stage one is like intensive work with uh, adopter SME to define what will be done, what are the technical requirements. So the first stage zero is very intense with adopter SME, but then the last five months, this is where the AI talents are the key. Also then SME, of course, has to be there to, well, to control the development also, well, to, to report to both apps, to collaborate with AI talent, uh, you know, and to make sure that the solution will be actually developed according to your needs, but AI talents, will have a lot of work then also in this five months now. So yeah, it's five months uh, when the AI talents are intensively involved. Uh, thank you, Sabela. We have another question. As an AI talent, can I update my data on your AI talent list provided in the application form? Uh, well, from the, if you have already submitted your application in the expression of interest, because probably that's what you mean, and you are validating, we do not accept, if the application is repeated, we do not accept it, but um, because yeah, the validation was already done, so you are already included if you receive the confirmation that you've been validated, so you've been already included, okay, in our, in our pool of experts. Okay, so there's no possibility to update it, but please drop us an email. Okay, so I can actually see if, if there is anything we could do on that. If there is a big change, a revolutionary change in your profile that would totally change um, no, the, the offer that was validated, then we might, we might try to find a solution. Okay, but as general, uh, we do not accept the, the re Reapplication re to the expression of interest. Uh, perfect. Another question: Could you could you please confirm if all the training data and the train models will be made available to the public? Is there a way to participate in the project if we have confidential data that is related to intel intellectual property that we would like to keep inside of our company? Uh, but I think this question is divided in two. No, but at least I found it like to. Uh, can you read, read the first part of the question that was about if it will make public, if one size market list will be made publicly or accessible to the selected uh, adopters, I think. Yes, so please, could, you, could you please confirm if all the training that and the train models will be made available to the public? Uh, yes, those that are available uh, will, be, uh, will be made available to the selected adopters and those and AI talents that will be engaged in the program. So that's the answer is yes. And with relation to the IP, to the second part of the question, I'm sorry, but I didn't understand uh, that part. Okay. Uh, yes, they would like to know uh, if they can participate, but keep confidential uh, the data that is related to intellectual property. Ah, okay. Uh, well, then you have to take into account, well, there was a mention about the licensing model, no, of the data that will be used, uh, that it's important to keep in mind that, I mean, the end goal of the bonsai marketplace is to, like, allow people and this openness, no, that people can come and reuse the resources that are being developed. So if the commercial data are used or, like, private data are used, you should rethink maybe, I mean, we will not push uh, that, but of course then the chances to commercialize such an AI solution later on might be no more difficult. So that's, that's, that's I'm not the IP expert, so I'm sorry if I'm uh, here um, not giving the direct answer, but, uh, but yeah, the idea is to um, 
to commercialize this solution later on. So the data sets licensing model should be carefully reviewed. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question related um, about HW resources. So what about HW resources for its computing? As you might know, this talks in the UA, UA uh, for TPU and GPUs and other processor for edge computing are very difficult to buy and receive. There are no stocks. Uh, do you plan to also lend HW devices to the selected SME to integrate the solution development to the project? Well, the HPC resources are, are part of our pool of external services. So for instance, indeed with, with the GPU, I have to say even from those HPC providers that applied, we had to reject some uh, that because they didn't have the GPU resources. But those that are validated that we work with because they were already, already engaged in our first support program that finished already. So these, um, these providers have uh, these GPU and HPC resources and are able to provide them uh, to, to our beneficiaries. Okay, and you have a dedicated budget for that, which is up to 8,000 euro that can be used during all the project to, uh, to these resources if needed. Okay, thank you. We have another question related to the success rate of the call. So they would like to know which success rate are we expecting? Uh, well, the success rate uh, depends, of course, what's the exact definition of it, uh, because I've heard different uh, options. We plan to select up to 11 adopter SMEs. Okay, so this is a fact. Then the success rate depends on how many people will apply, right? So for now, um, for now, we are just like in the middle of the open call. So it's still big question mark, okay? But of course, uh, I mean, the, 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 this is the, the big chance, and I believe the, um, the proposals is quite short uh, and quite straightforward. So it should take like maybe one day to, to write the proposal. Um, and I think it's still worth it, you know. So even though it's only up to 11 uh, adopter SMEs, I believe it's still, the, and the funding is quite, uh, quite nice, I would say, in comparison to the other projects. So, I believe it, it shouldn't uh, frighten you know, the, the applicants to, to apply. But I don't have the percentage because the success rate will depend on how many people will submit the application. Okay, but I can tell you from the experience in previous uh, AI uh, dedicated open calls, we tend to receive at least 100 submitted applications. Okay, so if, if the number is needed. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two other questions. Um, the Italians just provide advice and connected with that question, another participant would like to know uh, if that uh, Italian would get 39, 39K. Uh, yes, so AI talents do not, uh, I wouldn't call provide the advice because they actually execute now. So at the end, I have this slide at the beginning uh, where it was shown, right, this division this, between stages. And there you can see that AI talent is a crucial part of the use case development. So they will train the models, uh, they train the data sets now that will be provided by the adopter SME. And they will work closely with the Bonsabs team to, to deploy and to, to reach this final objective of developing and deploying a solution to the Bonsai marketplace. So saying, so advice is, I would say it's much more than only the advice. Okay, um, and then there was, sorry, I forgot the other part of the question that was, I yes. they get 39. Yeah, they would like to know if it is uh, the limit 39K and uh -huh. does you cover the whole cost of participation of the AI talent? Okay, good question. Yes, the, uh, the 39K uh, is the voucher that SME has, right? The selected SME to contract AI talent. So this is a limit like per use case, you know, that this is an amount that they have to hire these experts to execute the AI solutions. But as for the AI talent, AI talent can be engaged in different use cases execution. So we don't have this limit. If you are skilled enough and you have enough time uh, to work with many SMEs and you are match with the requirements, it is possible. But still, as you could see, we have 170 experts 
So probably, well, depending on the workload, usually it will be one to one, but there is no limit for the AI talent. I mean, there is only limit that is the funding in all the Bonsaps project that is 200,000 euro. That is very difficult to exceed. Okay, so this is like for anyone that is participating in Bonsaps from a doctor SMEs to AI talents, any third party cannot exceed 20,000 euro. Okay, but this is quite difficult. Uh, but just worth mentioning that it's not that there are no limits, but uh, yes. So 39,000 is the limit per use case, but AI talents can be engaged with various SMEs. Okay. Thank you, Isabella. Connected to that question, uh, we have another question. Uh, they say, both of target AI on edge, are edge devices and infrastructure to be funded by vouchers or should be provided by SMEs? Uh, with this question, I'm not sure if I can. Well, the, the AI solutions that will be to, de to be developed are to be deployed on edge. So, if there is no uh, if there is no device available, then of course the SME can cover the costs from the grant, right? To to purchase such a such a device, no, for for the execution of use case. But we ourselves we don't have this, these devices, no, as a part of the support program. But here again, I'm a not very technical person, so I hope that uh, I replied correctly. Thank you very much. We have a final question. I know we're receiving another one. Is there any limitation on the sector of application? Uh, no, on the sector, well, indeed, you will see that, uh, and we really invite you to do so, um, to check the results of our first, uh, first open call program. Because there, indeed, we were focused on robotics, healthcare, manufacturing, and automotive. So there are many resources from Bonsaps that you will find on Bonsai's marketplace that are dedicated to those challenges, no, from those sectors. So of course, it's probably much easier to find the the use case in these areas, in these four sectors. But we are not limiting second open goal to this. So if you are able to like to reuse any of these resources in another sector, we are more than welcome to see that. Okay, I'm just saying that probably we so we don't put the limit, but as per recommendation, you when you start getting deeper to the bonsai marketplace resources, you will probably see that many of these are related to the sector. No, but we we are really looking forward to see if those solutions and those resources could be scaled to another industry so there is no uh, sector limit perfect we have a final question if we develop an AI use case with proprietary data and keep the solution proprietary will the participating sme have full ip rights to be developed solution or is the final outcome that the AI solution will be available on the marketplace well, it depends on the data that the that the SME will because the, the SME is responsible for providing the data and defining the challenges, right? So the licensing model at the end will depend on on this part. You know, that's as I said. But here I invite you to read it also in the guide for applicants. And in case there are more questions, um, we can also try to about IP and the ownership. I will be glad to also reply by email or to publish this after this webinar. Uh, just to be 100% sure that I don't make a mistake when replying. But basically, it depends on the data, uh, on the data model licensing, mod, uh, licensing no? the, the who will own the solution at the end. But as I already mentioned, it's really like this mindset of the marketplace that is uh, available. Of course, it can be later commercialized. So this will be also, this is our idea no? about the bonsai marketplace that if someone will have this solution, it could be available to buy through the marketplace. So at the end, it's not that it will, everything will be open source. Right? Okay, thank you very much, Isabella. We don't have more questions. <laughs> Great. So anyway, just to summarize, um, to all these questions, we'll try to gather them and also we'll publish like the, the post, no? a summary of uh, is this most, but these were very good questions. So uh, we'll try to put them into the, into the writing. Okay, also to send as a follow-up to this webinar uh, and uh, update the frequently asked questions. 
So thank you for, for your time and for these questions. And uh, we invite you for these technical ones. Uh, we have uh, an expert here, the Miguel de Prado, that is a senior researcher in Bonsai's marketplace. So he is the best person to uh, transfer the more Bonsai's marketplace technical related questions on the webinar on the 6th of October. Uh, but of course, in the meanwhile, you can also send your questions by email. So we will also try to adapt this webinar to, to your biggest uh, doubts. Uh, but I believe it's quite also important to see the capabilities of the marketplace. And as I mentioned, the catalog will be published next week. So that will also help you to, um, to work on your proposal. Uh, and that's it for today then. So please don't forget about the deadline. Uh, here's also the website where you have all the documents uh, that you can review and in case of questions, contact us by this email. So thank you very much for your time today and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.